Welcome to LeaderCast, episode 248. You're listening to LeaderCast, Transform Missions podcast with Tim Bias and Sarah Thomas, providing you with resources to navigate the challenges and opportunities of courageous, Christ-centered leaders. Sarah, when I say I believe in something like I believe in Jesus or I believe in the Bible, what am I saying? Am I saying the same thing when I say I believe Jesus or I believe the Bible? Just what does it mean to say I believe? Before we answer those questions, let me remind you that the show notes for this episode can be found at transformingmission.org forward slash 248. This is the first in a series on words that matter. Why are we talking about the word believe? There seems to be a lack of understanding of belief, what you believe, and faith, believing as a response of trust and obedience. Now, before I give it all away, Tim, just what is it that you believe? (laughs) Well, today we're discussing what we mean when we say, I believe, whether it be I believe in Jesus or I believe in the Bible or I believe whatever. What are we really saying? Uh, When I think of that, I remember when I was a boy, when I would do something to hurt one of my brothers, which was often, (laughs) or talk back to my mother, which was a daily occurrence, (laughs) or did something that was not nice, my mother would correct me or punish me. uh, And I knew she was upset with me. That was the the real point. Uh, And after a little time passed, I would apologize. I'd say something like, um, I love you, mom. And she'd say, well, I love you too. Now, if you really love me, show me in the way you behave. That is the essential part of believing, showing what we believe in the way we live our lives. So you've just named one way to look at believing. Isn't believing also a way of considering whether something is true? Like, I believe in the Bible. I'm saying that not only saying I believe in the existence of the Bible, but I'm also saying I have faith or confidence in what the Bible says. Yes, that's true. And is it believing also the acceptance of a belief system like what you and I believe as Christians? Don't we say what we believe when we affirm our faith with a creed like the Apostles' Creed or the Nicene Creed? Yes, it is important to remember and recite what we believe. But there's a danger of allowing what you believe to become passive. It comes when you say, I believe the Bible, and you begin to list the things you believe. You state your belief. I think your intention is good, but you're you're taking believing and you're making it a static list of propositions. When I say I believe the Bible, the question becomes, what's my belief? And our tendency is to list what we believe the Bible says. The passive aspect of believing becomes an intellectual acceptance. You're saying it in a nice way. I was thinking regurgitating. Much less pleasant word. (laughs) So in other words, your belief does little to change your behavior. There is little, if any, transformation or conversion is what you're pointing to. Uh, You're right, and I I really don't want to be too negative here, but you and I might recite the creeds and have a list of things we believe, but that's all it is, an acceptance of something as being true. That isn't wrong, but it's not what believing means when we are taking faith into consideration. There's an active part or aspect of believe. In the Bible, the word to believe and the word for faith come from the same word. To believe is to have faith. Believe is a personal, relational, centered response of trust and obedience. It is personal in that God is known to us in in a person, Jesus of Nazareth. The person of Jesus reveals the personal nature of God. Jesus says, if you've seen me, You've seen the Father, and the implication is, in Jesus, you and I can see who God is and what God's like. 
so I'm hearing you say it's relational in the personal nature of God. We have a relationship with God, with others, with ourselves, and with all of creation. And Jesus says, love one another as I've loved you, and love your neighbor as yourself. The implication is, you and I love others as God has loved us. So it's centered in that the personal nature of God is seen and experienced in the person of Jesus. Yeah, let's do this one more time. Jesus <laughs> says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. The implication is, if you've seen Jesus, you've seen God. So Jesus is the way to understand the way, the truth, and the life of God. Then the dynamic believing is seen in our response of trust and obedience. Again, yes. Believing is more than intellectual acceptance of truth. Believing is an action of transformation or conversion. Believing is seen in the way we live. It's seen in our loving one another and our relationships and how we treat one another. This dynamic believing is the joining of head and heart. It's not only what you know intellectually, but you're putting what you know into everyday living. So to say it another way, to believe in Jesus is to be a person whose outward actions and inward thoughts, the piety and holiness, are in concert. It's a life transformed to reflect beliefs in a dynamic conversion and transformation. And as you've said before, Sarah, from the perspective of the Bible, to believe is to have faith, which means to trust and obey God's action in Jesus on our behalf. So to believe is to live the life God has intended us to live. So the question, do you trust and obey the Bible? Sarah, would you read John 14, 5 through 9 for us? Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do not know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. I think that's an interesting scripture because the theme in John uh, Gospel is if you've seen Jesus, you've seen God. So to believe in Jesus, to trust and obey Jesus, is to trust and obey God. And when Philip says, Show us the Father and we'll be satisfied, I think he's actually speaking on behalf of all of us. Just show us God. That's all we need to trust and obey. And Jesus responds by saying, have I been with you all this time and you still don't know? You know, the implication is that the work of God is seen in the work of Jesus. And the work of God's love is seen in the way Jesus loves. Then as if to turn things around, Jesus says, and as the Father has sent me, so I send you. In other words, to trust and obey Jesus is to live the life of Jesus, loving people the way Jesus has loved you. So to believe is an active response of trust and obedience revealed in the way you love others. So Tim, will you read Matthew twenty-eight eighteen to 20 for us? And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. And remember, I'm with you always to the end of the age. So the theme in Matthew is God sent Jesus to teach us how to live a righteous life. So to believe in Jesus, to trust and obey Jesus, is to live a life of righteousness. When you read Matthew's story of Jesus, righteousness is not a purity of living as much as living in right relationship with God. Love the Lord your God and right relationships with others. Love your neighbor as yourself. When Jesus says in what we know as the Great Commission, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you, he is referring to living in loving relationship 
working for the well-being of neighbor, stranger, and enemy. He is referring to the way you make promises and commitments to the people around you. He is referring to forgiving others as you have been forgiving. You want me to keep going? (laughs) Because there's so much more. To believe is an active response of trust and obedience in developing healthy relationships with people. Relationships of working for the good of people. Relationships of trust and integrity. So, Sarah, let's give him one more example, and that's Mark 1, 21 through 27. Will you, will you read that for us? Yes. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching? With authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. Yeah, the theme in Mark's gospel is God sent Jesus to oppose all the evil, suffering, and pain in the world. So to believe in Jesus, to trust and obey Jesus, is to oppose the evil, suffering, and pain in your communities, neighborhoods, and the world at large. And a close read of that scripture implies that there was a shouting match in the sanctuary, or at least a meeting of opposing forces and views. So even the unclean spirits know who Jesus is by intellectual assent or intellectual acceptance. What do, you have, what do you have to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. There's not a change of behavior, no love of neighbor or enemy, just a disruption of the life of a man who knows who Jesus is, but who does not live in the trust and obedience. And when you read Mark's story of Jesus, Jesus is restoring relationships. When he heals uh, the man with leprosy, he's restoring the man to his family, to his community, to his synagogue, to his job. And when Jesus encounters the man with demons in the cemetery, he frees the man from the pigs, from living life as if he were dead, trapped in the evil of his living. Over and over in Mark's story, Jesus is facing the evil and the suffering of people. Even half of Mark's story is about Jesus' own suffering and death. So the question I've always asked is, did Jesus win the shouting match in the sanctuary? And over my years of ministry, I've experienced hundreds, if not thousands of people who give one, three, five, eight, 12, 16 hours a day, day after day, to relieve pain and suffering to work for mercy and justice. And again, with all the response to the evil, suffering, pain in the world, did Jesus win? I think the answer to that question is found in your own heart, in your response of trust and obedience. There is so much more that we could say, but we think that you get the point. To say you believe in the Bible is to say the Bible is the written word of God that shows us the living word of God, the word made flesh in Jesus. And as a leader, your life is transformed by God's love in and through Jesus. And your response to God's love is trust and obedience. It's a response of faith. So what do you mean when you say, I believe in Jesus or I believe in God? Is it intellectual acceptance or a response of trust and obedience? You can find show notes for this episode along with the scripture references at transformingmission.org forward slash 248. And to answer those questions, only you know. Remember, who you are is how you lead. Bye for now.